Good afternoon, Smile Mentor family. We got another crazy out, out of the box episode today. It is gonna be a fun one because um, everybody's heard of stem cells. What are exosomes? How do they tie together? How does this apply to dentistry? Can I actually grow new teeth, grow new bone? All crazy stuff that you'll find out in this video. Matt Griffin here, the Smile Mentor. And today we're gonna be talking with Dr. Duncan Ross, stem cells. Right? I mean, we've all heard about them and they were shady at one point, but now everybody's putting them in their knees and what's the deal? Well, exosomes are actually come out of stem cells and it is gonna be pretty cool to hear from Dr. Duncan Ross about the new technologies, how regeneration can happen, not just putting in metal, but possibly regrowing bone and regrowing teeth what they're doing with that. And so I think you guys will enjoy this episode. It, uh, it'll also talk about some of the different health benefits outside of teeth. So pray it blesses you guys. Thank you for all the followers out there. Thank you for all the support. And uh, thanks for building the community with us. For those of you to yet to subscribe, please do so. And for those of you who are like, who in the heck is the Smile Mentor? Read in the description below and uh, you will see a link to about us and why we do what we do. Appreciate you guys and have a blessed day. Hello, Matt Griffin here with The Smile Mentor. Today we are taking a little bit of a unique turn in, uh, in our normal um, education process and really wanted to help you guys understand some of the different unique things out there when it comes to your smile. And so why in the heck am I in this amazing lab, 14,000 square feet of lab space in Miami, Florida. Well, I'm actually joined by, uh, by Duncan Ross, who is the CEO of Chimera Labs. And Thanks. we're talking about stem cells and exosomes today, uh, primarily exosomes, but stem cells and, and what, what, um, what, what, what they are, um, you know, now they've become buzz enough that, that you've heard that term or at least the stem cell term, but how does that apply to dentistry? How is, does regenerative medicine actually come when you're talking about your smile? Isn't that just your skin? Isn't that just a facelift or some joints feeling better or things like that? But no, it actually applies um, to, to when it comes to your oral health and healing side of it, your bone regeneration. So I'm gonna let Duncan speak on that a little bit, but uh, again, I'm, I'm really, really blessed to, to have had the opportunity to, to bring this to you. Really wanna thank you, Duncan, Thanks, for, for spending some time with us. Yeah. 27,000 square feet. Not 14,000 <laughs> square feet. This is that the was... largest exosome specific lab in the world probably just even in being around here today, seeing how many things and how many people want your attention, how many calls from around the world you're getting for solutions and, and being on the cutting edge of some, some really unique, awesome medicine. So the fact you take time for us, I wanna say thank you, Duncan. Thank I really you. appreciate thank you for that. Coming. You know, giving some people some background out there on how we met, we, we both were um, teaching at a conference, uh, different segments. I was, I was teaching on the business marketing side, you were teaching on what, exosomes were and I sat into that and and I had a good uh, background somewhat uh, before the conference on what exosomes were because I saw the business and the effective side in interviewing those twins um, which we talked about was amazing right. but but then we got a chance to sit down on camera the first time and get to know you a little bit um, tell you know how Tell me a little bit about yourself. We got to kind of hear some of why you're doing this and your mom was a big factor in that, right? Well, it's, well, it's actually my father. Your so, father, I'm sorry. Uh, well, my mother's the, the deal now, but my father had leukemia and he was also a scientist. He used to fly into hurricanes and measure the wave heights. He's a physical oceanographer. So that's why I'm from Miami, because he worked for NOAA. Okay. Uh, so when he was diagnosed with myelodysplastic syndrome, uh, as the researcher that he is, we started researching, uh, but learning, like everyone who has a family member with a disease, you get busy, but you know, you really can't do it. You can't really understand what you're reading and fast enough to save that person. I'm pretty sure almost everybody goes through that experience. So I had the same experience, but I, I, I was sort of lucky in a way. Usually when you're, somebody has acute myeloid leukemia, they die in six months. By the time they find out, it's because their bones are breaking and, and, uh, and they find out they have six months to live. In his case, 
Myelodysplastic syndrome is a much slower moving disease. So I had about six years with him. So we were able to do a lot of reading in that time and a lot of learning. I still made the wrong decisions and he passed away, but I, was, I started graduate school before he died. He died two years after I started. And that's why I studied bone marrow transplantation because that's what I was afraid to take him to because it's such an onerous uh, therapy. Oh, okay. 50% of people die. And so when you don't know anything and you read that, you, you stick with chemotherapy, which is the wrong approach. You really should have gone to bone marrow transplantation more rapidly. So bone marrow transplantation is the original cell, stem cell therapy, right? And we have 70 years of experience with it. We know the proteins, we know the mechanisms, the protocols, uh, different types of tests uh, to, to run. So when I saw this burgeoning field of, of regenerative medicine, specifically people using umbilical cord cells, that kind of blew my mind because here I'm studying cord blood transplantation for leukemias and people are using it for orthopedics. I was like, well, what is going on here? Yeah. So that's when I started to you know, start to look more into the field. You know, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on was a, I had enough history with you to know, you know what you're talking about. You're gonna, you're, you're, you're high level science, but you can break it down in a, in a terms that guys like me and, and our followers can understand. But secondly, it was y'all's commitment to excellence. You know, there was there was something that I noticed different with Chimera. You know, we, we worked also with a lot of integrative doctors and got to interview other labs. I've actually been to and talked to other labs and they're nothing like this. They don't, they don't invest in what you invest in. And so tell me a little bit about Chimera. What, when you, when somebody says Chimera, what do you hope they think when they say that word? Well, now I think you just pointed out, I want them to think healing, right? Mm -hmm. um, because regenerative medicine takes a while. I, the way I say it is if it took nine months to make you, why should you believe that one shot from your doc is gonna, gonna have you all fixed up mm -hmm. from a tendon injury? I mean, mm -hmm. these are things that need to be worked on over time. But what we can immediately fix is healing and time to healing, which in my case, when I had my wisdom teeth removed, it was extremely painful for three weeks. I felt like he just gouged it out. Yeah. But why was it painful? It was painful because of the inflammation. And so if I can stop the inflammation while he speeding up healing, and yes, we do have a protein called osteoprogenin, which causes bone formation. So it's good for the, what you would think a dentist might want. But really, it's, I want to start getting people's mind around the rapidity and the lack of pain the patients can have mm. if they're treated with exosomes at the time, even pre-surgery. That's one of our major uh, you know, goals now is if you pre-treat before you create a suture, the inflammation is not going to begin with at all. So you're not going to get that pain. Why? Uh, why? Yeah, why? I mean, if all of a sudden you're, you know, if, if before a scalpel ever touches my gums and they remove any of the teeth, what, what does, how do exosomes help mitigate why, that? Yeah, why treat inflammation after it's already started when we could treat it before it starts? Uh, because there's, these exosomes come from mesenchymal stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells, pretty much just like every cell in your body, are very anti-inflammatory. You probably don't think about it like that. It took me a while to wrap my mind mm -hmm. around. You are an anti-inflammatory organism, and you're only inflammatory when you have a reason to be. Because if you, were, if you were inflammatory all the time, you'd have terrible arthritis. And indeed, that's why older patients get arthritis. So all of your cells are secreting anti-inflammatory factors until they don't need to. And it actually takes two hits to get them to turn into an inflammatory cell. So by taking these cells from babies, and what are babies? They're very anti-inflammatory. They don't get cancer. They're growing. All good things. So the cells that direct that are the mesenchymal stem cell. So we take those cells from placenta, we expand them, and while that's happening, we're con uh, collecting the growth factors, which we previously thought were just proteins, but we now understand are these circular balls of fat that protect the proteins that are inside. And that's what an exosome is. You, you brought up a point that, you know, let's rewind the clock. I remember when we first started hearing about stem cells and the morality of it, mm -hmm. right? Right. You know, and, and I, it used to be, I mean, I think it was, it was one of the bushes. It's around right? 2000, right? That, that all this started. Yeah. The big hoopla, right. And so, you know, it's, it's like, well, is this, they take this from babies? They rob babies of this? What, 
What are they, you know, what, walk me through that piece of it. Cause I know if anybody watching out there is like me, I mean, they, they don't know how the history is and they don't know where that jump happened. I know it happened. I know it went from taboo where it was like, Ooh, you know, I mean, you had to go to all foreign countries to even ta say the word stem cell hardly. Yeah. So then now all of a sudden you'll see them in ads and that type of stuff. What, what happened there? What is there's the definitely a lot of confusion and, and, the confusion doesn't start from the scientists. Confusion starts when it starts getting out into the populace <laughs> and then the right. game of telephone starts, right? right. Um, the stem cells that Bush was upset with, maybe for good reason, uh, were embryonic stem cells. So during in vitro fertilization, you have a little egg that could become an embryo, could become a human. And that was the issue with that. I never wanted to work with those stem cells. And in fact, the majority of scientists around the world don't. Why? Because if you, have, you implanted that into you, you would get what's called a teratoma, a cancer. Why in the world would I want to deal with that? I take these exosomes for placentas that would be discarded anyway. This from C-section, you know, ethically donated. The mother wanted to do this. And so it's actually an adult cell. It's kind of weird. Is it? So a fetus is a baby before it comes out, right? As soon as they're born, it's now an adult. And so the placenta is adult stem cells. There's nothing wrong with that. And if I injected one of those cells into your body, nothing would happen. Um, I, in fact, don't use the cells anymore, which is something that I learned in 2014 and have therefore uh, educated most people to at this point. But uh, there's nothing ethically wrong with it. And uh, in fact, as far as I'm concerned, it's a better and safer cell population to use. So, so instead of, so, so a mother has a birth gives birth to a child, it has to be a C-section. And the reason C-section, from what I've learned, is because you don't want to contaminate it. That's correct. And so you've got a cleaner placenta that, that um, let, help me, help me, uh, I'm going to show my ignorance right now. The placenta is what surrounds the baby as they're in the womb? Yeah. Yes. Well, I, so think about it this way. The placenta is the most anti-inflammatory organ because it's the only organ that has to not reject another human being. You know, I can't just give you my kidney, right? It will reject it. Wow. The mother's trying to not reject that baby. So the way it works is the placenta is a sponge. The mother's bloodstream comes down and then it filters through the sponge. Now, all the cells don't make it through that sponge. The proteins and the exosomes do make it through that sponge. So just as the mother's nourishment goes into the baby through this sponge it really feels like a sponge like, and it's, it's just a blood-filled sponge the baby's young exosomes go through that sponge back into the mother making her glow and making her live longer in fact the more children you have the longer the mother lives and that's been demonstrated in animals and humans really i mean i this is this I, you heard you said this later today and it blew my mind and i you know you brought up that one of your products is called Exaglow. Right. And I'm going, why? And you shared that with me. Tell me that again. That's amazing. Well, you know, everyone has said, as long as you've been alive, that uh, when p mothers are, are uh, pregnant, they glow. So what we started seeing as soon as we treated our first burn patient, which is where that word came from, is that he, when he came out of it seven days later, his face was glowing. In effect, he looked like a pregnant mother's skin looks because he, I took baby exosomes and put them on his face. That got integrated into the skin as it was regrowing, and he grew back looking like a baby. Looking like and this is those pictures we saw in the lobby. That's right. And, and so this guy had, had uh, second degree burns. Right, he threw water on a gasoline fire and he burned his face and he was black. So he, he had a real danger of scarring and keloiding. And he does keloid on his chest. So he neither keloided nor scarred. And that was the first visual understanding I had. I had already seen what they could do in vitro in the laboratory, uh, but I'd never seen it on a human before. So that was the first shot. And, and if I remember right, you have three pictures, day of, the second picture seven days later? Seven days, right. What's the third one? 60. 60 days. Yeah. So two months later, he looked like that after? Yeah. It looks wonderful. He still looks good today. I mean, I, it really is. I mean, I, I, I hope we, we get a little bit of that before we leave on, on some of the, to, to show our viewers what we're talking about, because it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, so now, 
So now, so now you're saying that women, and my wife is expecting right now, and I know that's why it, it clicked when you said it. Because Can I get I, that placenta? <laughs> what's that? Is she doing a C-section or a normal birth? Uh, we don't know yet. We you know, I have, I have ethical methods of getting tissue, but when I started this, I didn't know what that was. I just needed a placenta. So I clearly remember walking up to a pregnant woman on the beach who looked like she was about to pop and saying, hey, what are you gonna do with your placenta? And she just looked at me like I was crazy. I said, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's for science purposes, I promise. <laughs> you really did that? Yeah, now I just paid for them, so it's fine. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Do do mom do moms get paid for them if they want to donate them? They don't. That's illegal. Uh, but there is a lot of work that the uh, companies that collect them have to do. Uh, they have to test the mother. They have to collect the tissue. They have to get the tissue to me within 24 hours. They have to be certified to do that kind of thing. It's it's not a trivial task. So they deserve the company that collects it deserves to be paid for it. I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So so the mom. So the placenta, two-way sponge, it's not just a one-way track. You're, the mom's not just feeding the child, which is what I would think, but the child is excreting mother, healthy right. stem cells and exosomes or just No exosomes? cells, because the cells can't get across the- uh, Just the exosomes. Right. Okay, um, I, I, know, I know we're gonna spend a fair amount of this front time on, on educating on what exosomes and stem cells are, so so I know this will be a longer episode. So, so guys, bear with me, but this, this will pay off as far as in what learning about this, because this, this really is mind blowing on not just with the teeth, but look younger, feel younger, more energetic. I mean, we've interviewed and seen autism reversed with this, with, with their stems, with their exosomes. I mean, I know that's claims they're not gonna make, but that's claims that I saw firsthand. I mean, I interviewed the people, I saw it. It was an amazing one twin, another twin, another story for another day. Uh, but, um, and when you're talking about the exosome versus stem cell, what I learned, and please correct me if I'm wrong, um, is that the stem cell is much larger. The exosomes are a derivative or an extract from the stem cell. Stem cells, a lot of times, if you were to inject them in, you are going to get caught up in the lung and heart. That's right. Um, because they're bigger and that's our mm -hmm. filtration system for the blood, yes? The lung, right. And, and the not reason, the heart. Uh, so, no, the cells can't get through it very easily. They, some can get to the heart, right? But I might challenge you that the benefits that we're seeing with stem cells might have been from the exosomes that those stem cells were making. So the cells didn't have to make it to the heart. Maybe the cells made it to the lungs, started secreting exosomes in the lungs, and those got to the heart. So they break down? Okay, so how, how do you, so, 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 so again. If, if, if a cell was the size of this room, an exosome's about this big. So it can, it can go places that a cell can't. And that's why we were seeing with, with those two twins, with that one, I mean, the way they treated her was, was intranasal was through the nose, it passed the cribiform plate, which is the barrier which between- Which a cell wouldn't do. Which is because it's too big and the exosome's small enough <coughs> so that it's able to penetrate the brain immediately. Yeah. And so, and it was weeks, if you will, before that, I mean, it really was an amazing story. But in that process of doing that, I learned that the exosome being a much smaller, uh, and that it is the almost the sweet juice that that uh... I used to say the secretions, but then that got old, and now people know what the next one is. But it is the juice, right? The sweet oh, juice, right? The way I usually uh, discuss it is almost exactly like that. I say that the placenta is the olive tree, the cells are the olives, and the exosome is the olive oil. And in mm -hmm. fact, they even have the same consistency as olive oil. It's a lipid fat based uh, particle. Wow. Yeah. So. I mean, we've covered some some already just, I mean, when I say tip of the iceberg, it's almost the snowflake on top of the iceberg on, on how crazy things are advancing in this world of medicine. Um, what do you think the next 10 years look like? And we're gonna cover more on the dental here in a minute, but just as a whole, 
What do you think the next 10 years for this specific kind of medicine is gonna right. look like? I, I really think that 10 years from now, if you can wait that long, uh, we'll be able to rewind aging. Um, you'll be using exosomes to treat cancer. You'll be using exosomes to treat your testosterone levels, uh, to regrow teeth. Uh, just regenerative medicine is, is advancing at a very, very rapid pace. And if you look at the advancement of different types of technologies over the years, mm -hmm. uh, when they get to this point is when they, they really start ramping up. You know? So is this almost the hyperbolic stage? At this, now we got there, right. So now we're gonna shoot up. I mean, people needed to understand that it wasn't the cells. That was not an easy task to convince people that you didn't need the cells. I mean, it's stem cell therapy. How can you do it without the cell? Well, a biochemist knows, I mean, all you really need is the particles that it make up the cell, not the cell itself. I love it. I believe in it. I've seen it work. So, so that really, you know, let's, let's transition now, Duncan, over to the dental side. Um, as we've talked, the, this education documentary series we're doing is going to be really focused on the full mouth replacement implant, uh, all on X therapy that, right. that's out there. And I've learned in the dental world, bone is gold. You never get it back is what they said, which is crazy. I think you can, but you know, that, that they have to, they have to, for the all on X, they have to extract your teeth, grind down, remove some of the bone for clearance. And then they, then they have a foundation and they zip in four to eight implants. And then they put on a prosthesis and you heal for typically four to six months. And now you have um, osseo integrated because of the titanium integrates with the bone, new teeth, if you will. Mm. And so when you and I have been talking and thinking this through, you really came through some unique uh, ideas that I'm excited for you to, you know, we're, for you to share with the dental community when they're ready to be shared. I know there's some that, that you're working on that are pretty proprietary well, right now. I think there are only a few weeks away. Uh, we, we're creating a bone paste that has the growth factors in it. And I wasn't aware that it was a four to six months recovery. I, I, I promise you that it will be a six to eight week recovery uh, when you combine these growth factors with that bone paste. Um, For full osseo integration. Yeah. I had an example and he's a well known neurologist from uh, UCLA and he, he'll be happy to tell you the story. Um, he also likes to ride a Harley. So he, this guy is super important to me. He's, he's, he's the basis of my exosome that is going to rewind aging. Yeah. Um, so he, he fell off his motorcycle. He had a little accident. Somebody pulled out in front of him and he broke something like nine ribs, nine to 13 ribs, uh, shattered his clavicle, uh, broke his ankle. And so the next day I sent him 10 vials, which is about $10,000. He took five of them within three weeks. And he'll tell you this. He had no more pain from his ribs, which you know how long that usually painful. Take, it was painful. And uh, his, his ankle had, had healed and he has the images to prove it. So uh, you may want to speak to him at some point, but that's what I'm trying to say. The recovery time that you're seeing inflammation hurts recovery time, right? Bone can't sure. grow as quickly if there's inflammation. Sure. So if I'm telling you that we can both instantiate the growth of bone and stop the inflammation, that's why you want to pre-treat. That's why you want to post-treat. And I think you'll cut down those recovery times. And that's what the dental community should be saying to the patient. Like they, you want the outcome, but you want the patient's life to not be disastrous afterwards either. Right. right. If you could remove a wisdom tooth with no pain and a six day recovery, five day recovery, then why wouldn't you want to do that for right. them? Right. And the patients may be willing to, to take the upcharge to know that they can have that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited, you know, because again, I've shared with you one of the passion, my passions and reason I'm doing this documentary is, is, you know, I've had some bad dentists in the past that, mm -hmm. that I've chased good money after bad. My family has, it's just been a, a arduous journey to get to this point. And that, um, and that if we can, through our experience, help educate and not only just beat up on dentists, I know I kind of kicked their butt a little bit and, you know, but at the end of the day, there are some good ones out there. And, <laughs> and so I'm not, I am going to give credit to that, but the, 
But in what you're talking about, <clears throat> I think this can make a bad dentist good. Okay. When I was 18, my parents went out of the country. Suddenly I started having to have my wisdom teeth removed. I had to go to the Kmart dentist. And I really think he just gouged it out with a screwdriver. That's what it felt like. I don't know what your experience has been or other people's, but if you, if you could use these tools now, even he would not have caused me that pain because of the, uh, the growth factors and the lack of inflammation. Yeah. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Um, so now um, when, when it comes to bone, uh, let's say, do you think that there is any ability um, you're okay. Let's take my mom. Let's take my mom so that, so that I'm not violating any HIPAA <sighs> rules. I can talk about her. She signed my waiver. Mm -hmm. Um, she was in a denture for 25 years. I learned about bone atrophy. I don't know if I'm ever saying that word right. At atrophy, whatever it is where it, and, and it will resorb. Your bone will go away. That's why you'll see older people with the sunken in mouth. Osteoporosis, and right? And so can this for candidates out there, because right now I was just speaking with another clinician, high level that does zygomatic implants, goes into the cheek or the pterygoid. And so is there a way now with what we're doing to be able to ex grow bone back? So well, is that possible? Osteoporosis was one of the main IND applications with the FDA that I wanted to pursue. I don't know a lot about the dental field. That's why I haven't thought about it. But yeah. I certainly have identified bone growth proteins in the exosomes. And why would they be there? Because the baby needs to grow a bone. So the hardest thing for me to do has been just wrap your mind around what babies do. And I can't think about everything, right? I didn't think about baby's jaws growing, right? It takes you years um, and then you still haven't done it enough. But anything that a baby does is in baby exosomes, in young exosomes. Because of meeting you, uh, I used to have a dentin exosome from a seven-year-old. Uh, maybe she was six. Uh, this was many years ago. Uh, somebody didn't fill the nitrogen tank up and the cells died, but I have uh, Brett, who you were just speaking to, his little girl has one coming along. So I can absolutely start making dentin specific exosomes and they actually will be a little bit more powerful for that purpose. Um, the cells would scare me because this, this, the mesenchymal stem cells from a tooth are more what's called multipotent than one from say a placenta. Uh, because I don't know why, it's just been shown that they can turn into many different types of tissues that MSCs can't, they're special. Uh, so I'm gonna make some of those for you here in, in about a month. What, what um, so, so is that when your kid loses their tooth, you that's can right. take that? Grab so, that? So I've got some of those too, I can send oh, your that's way. that's right. I I'm need in. one, I'll give you some, some uh, solution. You drop it in there and you overnight it to me, I'll give you the FedEx. <laughs> I'm serious, we need, to, and we need to document this. Cause I mean, I think we're on the edge of some crazy, and, and that's the, the beauty about this, I know um, we're far enough along in this medicine that, that it's not crazy science, right? You right. know what I mean? <laughs> you I can... mean, we're far along, along now, I was thinking about that, where 70% of what we do here is quality control, okay? Anybody can go grow those cells, but I would have to do testing on the child first. I would have to do lots of different things before my, my quality control is gonna let me use it. Yeah. So we're, we got to think about that you know, yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the difference between the science and a commercial production operation. Uh, a scientist has no idea how to run uh, a pharmaceutical company, basically. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, seasoned employees like we have now. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and that's one of the fun things I've, I've loved about getting to know you, Duncan, is that um, this entire room this is your personal play lab. And I don't say that lightly, like when I say play lab, but you are a scientist by heart, by nature. You, you're you not, like you said, you're not a doctor. My father was a scientist. This is all, just like you said earlier, all you know how to do, yeah. this is all I know how to do. Yeah. Just like yeah. all I grew up was an entrepreneur, you grew up scientist. Yep. I love it. And so um, what, <clears throat> what do you see, um, 
you know, we, we talked about also uh, the microcurrent technology that I've been using the Equiscope when it comes to my teeth. Like I tried, I had an abscess, uh, it was highly painful and inflammatory. I used it, I documented some of it on, on video that the users probably know what I'm talking about. If not, you can look back at some of our previous videos. What is the Equiscope? How are we using it? And I want to save for time. I don't want to go through that again. But how do you see, uh, you know, we, we've talked about and I've tried to brainstorm with you the concept of marrying the two. Uh, will you share with me some of what thoughts you shared on how, how this, how the electric side and what it does to the cell and opening it up for the reception of and that type of stuff we well, share well what's interesting about your equus device which i just met today is the amount of control that you have so that one machine interacts with things in 50 different ways depending on the frequency that you set it at and the power i don't know if you're aware but you can suspend a particle in midair just using sound waves right sometimes we want waves that will move things around Sometimes we want electric shocks that will open what's called electroporate a cell so that things can get in. Sometimes you might want to kill some cells because killing cells does create a regenerative effect because the dead cells now, the body thinks that there's an infection because that's the only time cells die, right? Um, and it tries to push an anti-inflammatory milieu to stop that inflammation. So in effect, you're tricking the body, right? And so you get regeneration that way by, by killing cells. Other cells will move in to, to fix up the tissue. When you do that with exosomes in place, you get the regrowth of normal tissue. You might have heard of fibrin uh, cartilage and hyaline cartilage. You want the hyaline cartilage, not the fibrotic, the, fi the fibroblast-based cartilage. That happens when there's inflammation and the cells can't um, recombine in the proper way or remodel. So using these different frequencies, and you're gonna to have to create a book with all the different uses of the different frequencies, maybe you already do that. Um, you can do many different things. And in fact, you'll probably wanna use that machine on day minus 14 to do something, day minus seven. On day zero, you're gonna want a different frequency to do something else. And I, I, like, it, it's, the, the number of uses is, is, is vast. And the, most of the time, those machines only come with one frequency. Um, so well i know your cfo is excited for me to treat him when uh when we get done with this so right. we'll see how it goes um wh where do you want chimera to be five years from now what's your goal you know covid has impacted us all in so many strange ways so we, we don't we don't even know what we want right but previously i had to travel three times a week to get the word of exosomes out to keep the lights on. I can't do that anymore. That's the only reason it occurred to me that, wait a minute, I could be a scientist again, you know? And, and I love it. I, I didn't even get to, to spend time here. Like, look at this place. And, it, and, and my COO said to me, he's like, Duncan, this is your playground. You can do whatever you want. I mean, it is a candy store for me. So getting back to being able to be a scientist is, is pretty cool. And uh, if I can just zoom from my meetings, Great. I mean, I do like learning in a conference setting, uh, and most doctors do because you don't have eight hours that you're just going to give away here. But when you're on a trip, you don't have a choice. So it is good for uh, for learning, but we'll see. You know, the world is never going to be the same. Business travel is never going to return to what it was. Uh, so I want to see this these labs flesh out with more and more scientists with different ideas, because when you sit at a table. And you go, you go to an idea with six PhDs around you. I mean, it almost, my hair is standing up on my arms, you know. It's, I try to explain this and junior people don't get it. I never go into a meeting by myself. I just don't know enough. I don't know everything. When you put six people together like that, the, the ideas mm. that come out are, are many times strong, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm privileged to be a part of this journey from a spectator side uh, mm -hmm. and from however we can help, but just, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see how this can really break into the dental world because I've seen it on the neurological side. You've already touched on some other points where this has helped. So I'm excited to see um, just because that's been our focus for so long. And so now let's see how this can bless others. Yeah, so it would be great. Um, yeah. Anything, anything you think I forgot or you'd like to share? 
I like that you sort of stayed away from uh, clinical cases. I don't want to get myself into trouble like that on, on tape. Yep. So, and I, I don't want to go too deep into the science because then they, their eyes lose blaze them. over. You'll lose them. Lose them. So I think you did a pretty good job there. Okay. Okay. Uh, too painful? For what? This. Painful at all? No. Okay. Some people don't like cameras. Some people don't like. I, I, I'm different now. But like I said, I can't. You are different. I will agree with that <laughs> statement. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't do a pre. I've tried. Like, yeah. I, I just stop. I mess up over and over again. When we start going, we start, in fact, I get tired. You know, because I feel like I just ran a, a marathon. Yeah. Talk to you guys. Talk on the phone. I had to zoom. You know, I can't make it by the end of the day. Yeah. Well, so. You still made it on this. Yeah. You did good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.